In this video, we're going to take a look at a mid-sized portable power station from Agi. As usual, we will go over the features and specs, but more importantly, we will test it to verify those specs. Before we get started, as with most of my review videos, I did receive this product free from the manufacturer in exchange for a review. However, I do my best to be objective and give you all the bad as well as all the good as I see it. Be sure to watch to the end of the video for information on a coupon to save $40 on this device if you purchase on Amazon. This lithium power station is rated for 400 watts and 380 watt hours. It currently retails for $300 US dollars, which is about where you would expect for its size. It can provide pure sine wave 110 volt AC power, 5 volt USB power, or 12 volt DC power through its outputs. It can be charged with solar and claims to have maximum power point tracking capability for its internal charging system. It does feature Qualcomm quick charging for your mobile devices and even has an LED flashlight on the side. So with the large handle on top, this is clearly designed to be portable for the camping, overlanding, and outdoor living market. At first glance, there isn't much remarkable about the box that the device came in. However, upon closer inspection, I did notice a couple interesting things that I wanted to point out. Obviously, this product is made in China. In my experience, you can have really high quality awesome products, and then you can get really shoddy knockoffs that won't last a week. So it always helps to read between the lines a little bit. For example, take a look at this sticker on the side of the box. Most products have their specs printed on the cardboard packaging. This one has a sticker. Now that may not mean anything, but it could mean that the specs of this product are subject to change. The fact that this product only has two reviews on Amazon right now would also indicate that the product is a new release or a new version of a previous release. So keep that in mind. Also, on the sticker it says that the life cycle is greater than 500 cycles. That should be much higher. Most lithium cells can go 1200 or more cycles and still have 80% capacity remaining. So the fact that they only claim 500 plus is a little bit concerning. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. Inside is the power station itself and two small boxes. Inside the boxes are a cigarette lighter adapter for recharging the station in your car and a solar charging cable with MC4 connectors and Anderson power pole connectors. And finally you have the AC adapter cable to recharge the station from an electrical outlet in your house. The user manual is very small and is written in a rough English translation from Chinese but contains all the info you need. It does outline the 12 month warranty which is pretty standard and gives you an email address to contact for support but no phone number. On the front of the station are the USB and 12 volt DC outputs as well as the function buttons and the LCD screen. On the right side are two AC outlets and the LED flashlights. The lights are comparable to a small flashlight and have several strobe functions for emergencies. The back side of the unit is blank, and the left side has a cooling fan and the charging inputs. Okay, enough talk. Let's do some testing. But before we can start, we need to fully charge the station. The manufacturer says this can take 8 or 9 hours charging in your house with the AC adapter, or 10 or 12 hours charging from a solar panel or your car. Now that the station is fully charged, the first thing we'll do is test a small load, in this case a box fan. I have a kilowatt meter which will measure how many watts we are consuming, and then we will measure how long the device runs non-stop until the power station shuts itself off. After running the device from 9.48 a.m. to 4.38 p.m. with an average load of 53 watts, the station shut off. Multiplying the runtime by the watts gives us a little over 362 watt hours, which is pretty close to the factory rating of 380. Not bad. Now let's recharge the station for another test. This time we're going to use a much more powerful fan to provide a higher load almost five times more than the other fan. This time the station ran from 8.33 a.m. to 9.58 a.m. before it shut off. Even though that was a much higher load, the battery pack held strong for over 355 watt hours. 
That surprised me a little bit because usually the effective battery capacity drops off more than that with a high load. So that's a really good thing. After charging the power station one more time, we will test its full rated power output and surge capability. I gathered up a bunch of different devices to simulate a load that would pull about 600 watts and then taper off to 400 watts. I plugged all of that into the Augie and hit the switch and it handled it no problem. Unfortunately, the kilowatt meter doesn't display the peak power fast enough, but it's close to 600 watts. Also of note, sometimes with these devices they rate them for a certain number of watts, but in reality they don't like to run very long at that max number. This station had no problem running at a sustained 400 watt load for over 30 seconds. In conclusion, the Augie power station is a good performer that does what it says it will do. It's built for portable use and has a lot of flexibility and good features. However, the warranty and support info and the temporary sticker on the box don't give me a ton of confidence that this product or this company will be around for a long time for after sales support. Now, as promised, currently you can use the link in the video description below to get a $40 coupon applied to your product on Amazon for a grand total of $260 US dollars. Thanks for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful and leave me a comment on what you liked or disliked.